Hello, I am Dr. Abstract, the founder of Zim. And last night I gave a talk at Create and TO, which is a meetup for creative coding in Toronto. I'd like to take you through that talk now. It was called Advances with Zim, a JavaScript Canvas Framework Code Creativity. Advances in Zim. So Zim 1 looked like this with wrap, code, create, build, and pages modules. And it was considered a library that would help us work with CreateJS. CreateJS was also a library that gave us the bitmap object model, the BOM, on the canvas, as well as events and other things. So Zim came along to help out there. For instance, CreateJS, it would take a couple lines of code to make a circle. Zim provided a circle class to wrap that all up in one line. And also things like a drag function that would allow you to drag that circle with one line of code. We also introduced components that, uh, such as buttons and sliders and dials as well to help us. In Zim Duo, Zim 2, we introduced a cool system to access parameters in a regular sense or as a configuration object so you could pick and choose which one you wanted to use. You might do this to get to a corner of 20, but we'd have to pass in null, null, and keep the order. Here, we're going directly to the corner of 20. Here's an example in Zim Drag where we're getting to the on top parameter, which might be the 10th or 15th parameter. As a matter of fact, Drag has something like 30 parameters, so do things like buttons and sliders, etc., have many parameters. So this allowed us to operate. <laughs> Otherwise, we really couldn't have done it. It would, be, it would have been unmanageable if we didn't have this system and we use this constantly as we're coding in Zim. It was so powerful, as a matter of fact, that we introduced it as a separate GitHub, uh, a separate GitHub repository, so you can come in and use this on your code. Here's Zim Try, or as we called it, Try Zim, and we had an interactive logo for the site here. You could play around with this and make tanagram type pictures. We also introduced three meta functions: async, wonder, and still. Async is like Ajax. It allowed us to get data back and forth from Zim without reloading the page. It uses JSONP and gets around some of the security issues of Ajax. Wonder allowed us to capture stats, like how many times we click something or how long something took. We might be moving Wonder outside of the main Zim library as a separate thing, so just watch out for that. A distill. Distill is amazing and actually changed the way that we looked at Zim. We had been using modules, and those modules still exist in terms of the documentation, but the modules uh, were, were bigger. You know, there's only five of them, and it may be that you didn't use certain code, so you didn't use that module. But Zim as a framework now, you tended to use all the modules anyway, and even if you didn't use one, you still weren't saving much, uh, much code if you only used those four modules. So what distill did is it turns out it's called tree shaking now. We didn't know it at the time, but you set distill to true to start, and then you run your app, and then at some point when you're finished running your app, you call distill, and it will minify only the code that you used. So that was, um, I suppose, probably almost like compiling. And it was much more efficient in, in reducing the amount of code, more efficient than modules. So we just stopped providing separate modules, and we just provide Zim in full. And then you can distill to minify your own version. That was Zim Try. Here's Zim 4th, again, an interactive top where you could make abstract art. In Zim 4th, it was a large change, probably our biggest. We wrapped all of the CreateJS objects as Zim objects. So here's a Zim container, for instance, which extended a CreateJS container. That allowed us to take all of the functions. We had something like 30 or 40 functions that we were doing, animate, drag, 
uh, center, etc. It allowed us to take all of those functions and put them on the Zim classes as methods. So now we could say circle.drag instead of zim.drag circle. Neat, huh? So all of the Zim objects, many of the components, I think all the components extend from a Zim container now, and they all have the ability to do uh, these things. All of the shapes, the blobs, circles, triangles, etc., all have uh, these methods applied to them. So it was quite a big change, and at this point we uh, realized, yes, we've got a framework here. Uh, at some point we introduced Zim frame as well, in here and chaining as well. So uh, we can now chain Cir new circle dot add to dot drag that type of thing. This can go on dot animate etc. And so Zim became very very efficient and very powerful in its structure in Zim fourth. Zim V we introduced a new site as well as Dr. Abstract himself here. We provided the Zim V values. These are dynamic parameters. And these also became very, very powerful throughout Zim, so powerful that we took them out and provide a GitHub uh, pick class. We uh, called it more of a generic name rather than Zim V. Zim V is version 5 of Zim. I don't know if you've noticed, but all of the versions of Zim have three letters. One, duo, tri, fourth. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty close. <laughs> the number four, th, as in v, etc. So look, look for that as we go through these things. So back to these dynamic parameters. Here's an example. We have a new emitter. And note as well that we've dropped the requirement for the zim namespace as well. So we don't have to say new zim dot emitter uh, as of zim five here, zim v. So we have a new emitter, and we're passing in an array with two objects in it. And what will happen is the emitter then will pick from these from these two objects. Normally, we would just be passing in a single object, and the emitter would emit that single object. It's only got you know it's one parameter there for the object, but that parameter accepts Zim V values, and an array is a form of a Zim V value that will then pick from that array randomly. Now that's really cool because then the emitter will emit circles and rectangles. Blah, 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 blah. But if we said, okay, outside, if we said let's randomly pick one of these and then pass that random answer into the emitter, the emitter would only emit that, that one particle, that one type of particle. So this is very handy. Here's another example. Here we're going to tile, and it allows tile allows us to tile an object. So we could tile a circle and make a bunch of those circles. But what if we wanted those circles to be different? Well, now we can use the Zim V value here of a series. So that's another one. Now it will tile circles in red, green, red, green, red, green, red, green order in a series. If we passed in an array here with red and green in the array, it would randomly pick and randomly make red and green circles, not a series. So this is cool. This allows us to make a slider and a dial and a button and pass those in as a series and it will tile the slider, the dial, and the button. Here's another example of an interval where we're passing in a Zim V value of an object literal that has a min and a max. This will run the interval at a minimum of 500 and a maximum of 2000. So in, in between there sometime. So each time the interval runs, it's at a different time. This is so handy. This allows us to drop flowers and collect them, but drop flowers randomly rather than, than always at one second, one second, one second, one second. So the Zim V value, very, very handy throughout, including styles as we're going to see. Here's Zim 6. In Zim 6, we introduced accessibility on the canvas. So for instance, we can make a button and a dial, and then we say new accessibility, and the screen we readers will read these out as we tab and enter through the application. So we do that by putting HTML objects, tags, in behind the canvas that function in a similar way, well, according to the screen reader. This was a huge effort to do, a lot, a lot of code, 
and we've got people using it. As far as I know, we're the most advanced uh, Canvas framework for accessibility in Zim 6. Zim HEP, we introduced the Zim School, created coding lessons, as well as TypeScript. So we've got thousands of lines for TypeScript so that we can say var frame of type frame class is equal to a new frame. We've automated all of that that brings in those brings in those uh, types, I guess, uh, into TypeScript. We also provided seven helper modules. Uh, physics for box with Box2D, 3 with 3JS, Socket with Socket.io. Some of these we had, but we solidified them. We, we uh, put the documentations in the top. And we also provided a game module with a game board and leaderboard and other things, as well as pizzazz 1, 2, and 3 for creating vector shapes icons and patterns. Seven helper modules in Zim HEP. Zim Oct, Zim 8, we introduced styles to the canvas. Here's what that looks like. Style is equal to a border colon dark, a border width uh, 5, and then types. If, if we have a rectangle, these are the styles that will apply to all rectangles made. So the color will be picked from this array. Remember Zim pick, Zim V values. We're center the reg, we're animating here in styles, and we're moving again with a Zim pick of a series. So the first rectangle that gets made will be moved minus 200 in the X, the second one zero, the third one will be moved 200 in, in the X. And so there we are looping and making three rectangles that will receive these styles. There's also group rather than type that allow you to do something like classes. We built this in a week. So we added CSS-like style to Zim on the canvas in a week. The reason we were able to do that is because all of this stuff looks very much like the configuration objects we were already passing in with Zim Duo. So we just had to generalize those. And there we are. Now you might be thinking that, oh, you know, hey, that's, that's CSS. Well, actually, this is the format of an object literal, and we in coding have been using object literals for things like style to get properties of things for a long time before CSS came along. So it's more the other way around. <laughs> in Zim Neo, Zim 9, we added animation along a path. So we have squiggles and blobs in Zim. A squiggle is a line that might be curvy, and a blob is more of a shape, a line that joins with, with a fill uh, that might be curvy. And we can animate along those and drag along those paths. Here's an example of a new blob. And we're making a circle, and we're animating that circle along the blob path. We could also say drag colon true to be able to drag that blob along the path. There's all sorts of features inside of here as well. Uh, we call it Zim Extra on Animate. For instance, as the object gets closer to the top, we can make it smaller. That makes it look like it's getting farther away. We also can slow down the speed of it as it gets farther away, and we can uh, decrease the alpha of it and the zoom, so how, how much uh, it's zoomed in, as well as the layers, so it can go through layers. All of these things, as well as a generic extra system that makes Zim totally powerful. You can animate things based on other animations. It's like, wow! So, uh, there we are in uh, Zim Neo, Zim 9, and one main difference between Zim and animating here, you've now seen a lot of CSS animations and green sock animations along paths and squiggles. And of course we had uh, those types of animations as well, path animations in Flash, didn't we? I, I can't even remember. I think we did. Maybe not. Yeah, I think we did. Yep. Um, but the difference is we can drag along those. We can let the user drag things and uh, kids apps that, you know, like the, those ones in dentist office where you've got beads on these tracks and you're dragging them along. We can remake those and fun things like that. It is amazing to make this stuff interactive as well. 
That was Zim Neo. Here's Zim 10, the last version of Zim, where we featured 10 banners of the uh, types of things that we can make on the canvas uh, with Zim, generative art, games apps, logo play, like interactive logos, adnusements, that would be adver gaming type thing, uh, data visualization. Wow, we've got like radial, radial um, menus and all sorts of cool UI UX can be made. Puzzles and learn apps, and infoactives, that's interactive infographics. Wonder cards, that's a multi-user egg that you can color. We integrated physics. So physics just becomes, as a matter of fact, this would work. New circle dot center dot add physics. And the circle would center on the page, but it would fall to the ground. Usually we want to specify something about the physics, such as the gravity, for instance. We can start that off with a new physics object here, add the circle, uh, and then physics.drag. You can now drag that circle around and throw it in the physics world, hit other things in contact. So we brought that all inside and documented it and much easier. It's really cool. We also support SVG, so now you can pass in SVG paths into blobs and squiggles. We provided Pizzazz 4, which was a whole bunch of squiggle shapes and blob shapes and uh, a tool to be able to make your own there. So really, we don't need to bring in SVG. You can just quickly make a blob of any shape you want. But if you happen to have one on the outside, we brought in SVG into that. Uh, we also provided Zim Retina, and this was an amazing change in 10.3. Zim Retina is retina crisp, vector crisp graphics, even with scaling and stuff like that. It required uh, the uh, adjusting to the pixel ratio, and it was quite a big change in behind to make this uh, vector crisp stuff really happen and really sing. So we're so happy about that. Zim is on CodePen as a topic, which is a link from the main CodePen page. CodePen is one of the largest, if not the largest, sort of social front-end coding environment. So we're really, really happy to be there, and we worked hard to get that to happen. Here are a bunch of Zim patterns and templates, and there's 50 or 60 of them. There's 50 or 60, maybe even 100 featured Zim pens. We've had a number of uh, pens uh, as a feature pen, so a picked pen right here. And that's been nice, and thank you so much for the support there from CodePen. There's also featured posts on CodePen, including the philosophy of Zim and some of the treats that we've been mentioning. It's a great place to start. You can see a pen and fork it. So these people have, have given it hearts and forked. This is Zinkle, a couple blobs with squiggles that are animating along the blobs. And you can pick these things up and twirl them. And all the squiggles still follow the blog blobs. It looks, it looks like a slinky kind of. It's kind of fun. It's called Zinkle. So come on into CodePen and find us there and give us a follow and some hearts. That would be amazing. Zim Slack, this is where you should be. If you are still here listening to this and you kind of like what you're hearing and want to try it, come on into Zim Slack. We're very friendly. We're there. We've got 16,000 uh, communications back and forth. Half of those would be Dr. Abstract. <laughs> All right, so come on in. We, we'd love to help and hear from you, and hopefully we can help guide you in coding creativity on the canvas. I'm Dr. Abstract. This has been the Zim Advances. We'll probably end at Zim 10. We were going to go to Zim 11. Uh, we would have called that Zim Lev. Let me just back up a bit to here. Down below it says we also provided accordion lists, selector, radial menu, and wrapper. It was that wrapper that nearly brought us to Zim Lev, or Zim 11. The wrapper allows you to wrap objects on the canvas, much like HTML can you know, easily wrap something in the window and make it go to the next line. That didn't happen naturally on the canvas. So we provided a wrapper class to do that. And you can put the wrapper class in the Zim window.
We've provided now a resize for the Zim window, which allows you to uh, change the size of the window and see that wrapped content wrapped to the next line. The wrapper is much like the CSS Flexbox, which was much like what we were doing in Adobe Flex. <laughs> um, the wrapper has as many, if not more, settings than the uh, the CSS Flexbox, and I think it's much more easy to read. I've seen sites out there, learn the CSS Flexbox, play Flexbox Froggy, and I'm going, okay, well, the wrapper, it just says what you're doing. You don't have to learn it, you just use it. So uh, come on in and check out the new wrapper class. You can put the wrapper class in a window and put that window in the Zim layout, which handles responsive design of regions. I called that flexive design. And uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. So it gives you everything you need to be able to do that resizing and wrapping within regions right there on the canvas in Zim. So like I said, come on by. Check us out. Uh, come on in to Zim Slack. We'd love to see you there. I am Dr. Abstract. Have a great night or day. Also, uh, just uh, one last thing, and that is before the talk, we showed the Zim, the latest Zim intro video, intro 2020, I think we called it. And it's probably on the front of YouTube right now on the Zim YouTube channel. So come on in and check that out as well. It takes you through a lot of examples of Zim. So we showed those examples initially, and then we came in and talked about the advances here as we did. All right. All the best. Bye-bye.